Hello, everybody. Still working from home. All this pandemic stuff is still going a little bit cray cray. So uh, welcome to my house. Welcome to where I actually post my videos from. And now we're just going to get straight into the news. A lot of interesting stuff happening already this morning. As of like 40 minutes ago, you know, Get Right was on the BBC talking about esports and the pandemic. And that's about it. Let's get straight into it. Welcome to the first piece of the news this week is actually dedicated to you lovers of the Star Wars games. It seems that it's been like several years since a new update came out about any games featuring anything from the world of Star Wars. And here we are. Ubisoft Massive have just announced with Lucasfilm that they are going to be pursuing a new game IPs. The game in question, as stated by the Ubisoft press release that they just put out, says the following. Ubisoft and Lucasfilm Games announce a new story-driven Star Wars game. The people behind the game have actually been working on games like The Division, and Ubisoft is a really good studio, so everything there should be top-notch. One of the things that's being celebrated right now on all the Reddit threads is the fact that EA has now lost total exclusivity to the Star Wars games universe, and people are pretty happy about that. So we're just looking forward to seeing what they're going to be building, and it seems that this deal has been waiting since uh, they've just been waiting, you know, for EA to lose exclusivity, which probably happened over the new year. So congratulations to Ubisoft Massive. They not only talked about their Star Wars game and their franchise coming forward there, but they also had Bethesda release a little bit of a snippet and a teaser to an Indiana Jones game, something that we haven't seen in quite a long time as well. So we're just going to show you the teaser right here. I, for one, am a huge fan of the Indiana Jones game, so I hope that it's going to be kick ass. One of the largest and most lucrative businessmen inside of the Chinese gaming market, also the CEO of uh, Yuzu, Lin Qi, has been found dead, apparently poisoned. It seems that the police are looking into this as a very suspect situation. And that is kind of like pretty ridiculous considering he's a billionaire. And a lot of people have been coming over to their Weibo accounts, which is a social media or the Facebook of China, and like sending their condolences to the company and everybody else. Right now, everything otherwise in Shanghai is being looked into. And that is actually a pretty sick piece of news as the man was behind some of the biggest uh, gaming content in the mobile market in China. And now he's also unfortunately passed away. Currently, everything's being looked into and we wonder what in the world happened there. Poisoning is quite an insane way to go. So hopefully it's nothing like purposeful, but you never know. And then going on to other Chinese news as we're just sticking into that region. Ming Li, one of the most uh, well-known gaming people in, okay, like get a little bit more involved now. Ming Li, who is the leader and, uh, you know, all around champion of Razer, has just announced something called Project Hazel. Apparently it's the first RGB compatible COVID mask. Razer is known for their great ideas and also being really fast to production on the market. The reason for this is, of course, that the company's owner and everybody else and the entire company's stake is in China and they have super fast access to everything that they need to make things happen. The mask Project Hazel is now uh, something they're calling the world's smartest face mask. Uh, for those of you thinking that this is the first time that Razer's moving into the surgical mask market, being a gaming peripheral company, which is what most people think, Razer has also moved into mobile markets and laptop markets and also into the webcam market with their, uh, you know, webcam series. But they've also had some uh, surgical mask things going on since the very beginning of COVID-19. So they've probably been working at this since the very beginning. So yeah, this isn't the first time they've been looking into surgical masks and it shouldn't surprise people that they've actually gone this way. They've also done these kind of things before. So there you go. Razer producing RGB crazy masks. And just going in for a quick story real fast. Riot Games and Bungie are actually going after a hacker named Cameron Sanders, and by hacker I mean someone that develops cheat software and sells it online for money. The two mega companies are actually for the first time ever, where two companies have cooperated in this way, gone into a, you know, collaboration lawsuit against uh, the man Cameron Santos, which is named in a lawsuit. If you are Cameron Santos and you are right now being sued by Riot Games and Bungie, I think you're probably pretty worried. Then again, you probably shouldn't have been making cheating software and selling it online to people. Cheaters are probably the biggest detriment into gaming, and that's also something that is backed up by the statements from both companies. So there you go. Don't cheat, don't sell cheats, or they'll come after you. And for the sweetest and shortest ever statistical news ever, Backend News site has actually compiled a list of, uh, you know, the use of the word gaming on Twitter. It might be a bit interesting since that actually has gone up about 75% since 2019. So in 2020, people tweeted out 2 billion times about gaming. 
they have compiled a list of really interesting statistics and we will have the link in the sources below as always but we're just going to go over the ones that we found more interesting right now the countries tweeting most about gaming were Japan, the US, and Korea. And then the most tweeted about games, Animal Crossing at number one, FGO Project at number two. Then we had like Twist JP, Final Fantasy, the Fortnite game, of course, Ensemble Stars, Game Knives Out, Genshin Impact, Play Apex, and Identify VJP. A lot of those games aren't very knowledgeable to you people here in the European market or in Scandinavia. And that's simply because those markets are insane online. Those markets represent a huge population demand, and when people make games, they think about those people, not so much us Scandinavians. However, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has released the game just for us, so that was pretty nice. Thank you. And uh, then we found, uh, randomly on the internet, a nice attempt at a viral video made by a publishing and ad company in Sweden called Ehrenstole. They have actually launched a middle review of a laptop and of a tower computer, and we're, we're like kind of at a loss of words. Uh, we, we Google them, you know, they're a PR company, ad company, probably hired by Lenovo, and it's actually, it made us laugh, so we're gonna just share some of the video here, and you can check out the comments if you wanna follow the video, so here you go, here's a metal review of a laptop. Thanks so much for Aaron Stola for that chuckle. It was actually pretty lighthearted and actually a pretty interesting viral video to trying to create, so thanks for that. Otherwise, we're just gonna go over to CD Projekt Red again, where the owner and operator has gone out and made a nice apology video again, because, uh, you know, uh, the launch hasn't been so great for like first generation or second or third. I don't know, what generation console are we at? Whichever one the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One is, that generation, that launch for Cyberpunk uh, 2077 didn't go so well. He's gone out and apologized, and he's also made a really good video that you can see on YouTube or in the links below, where he talks about the kind of changes that they're making to the game and what actual timeline they're progressing towards in order to get the game out there for everybody to enjoy. And the game is already still super playable on PC, and they're getting better and better. And one of the things that we really appreciate about this video is it reminded us how much this should have been the Blizzard Activision kind of apology that should have come out from Blizzard back then. This is a really good apology video and we really uh, uh, like, you know, it's good, thanks. In a quick esports related news though, we have two points of contact for you guys right now. And it is, uh, first of all, Edward, the League of Legends player is now retiring from the scene. Edward is one of the more popular players for the League of Legends team uh, Gambit. He's also been playing on Unicorns of Love and now he will be retiring. We just want to show you his list of achievements here and thank him for his time in the esports scene. Thank you so much, man. It's been a good career from 2011 till now. We hope you had fun and we hope for the very best for you in the future. Moving on into the other side of esports news. This morning, we were luckily surprised when we saw Get Right was for the first time ever, like officially by news media, commented as a Valorant player. He recently released a teaser video where he was going over to Valorant. And we're all enjoying that. And I really appreciated this uh, newscast. It was very simple to the point. It was very respectful of esports, which is something the news media hasn't always been good at. And then like, actually roll that clip with the, the you know, the people talking about esports and media and how it used to be. There's strategy involved. You have to physically be able to do it. They're competing. Listen, is it a sport or not? I believe no. it's a sport. They get sports visas you say no? to enter the game. country. Of course it's That's a not sport. a sport. That's not a sport. I, I, That's not a sport. It's not a real I sport. I want to talk about the 20 million people who are watching the damn thing. <laughs> and the money they got to be making. crazier and than the ones who big money to watch it. It's yeah, and uh, now, now, at, like, see how she's actually treating it now. About uh, how esports have been affected by the pandemic, I'm joined from Stockholm by Christopher Allison, a Swedish professional Valorant player. Christopher, good to have you with us. Uh, you've been named the best player in the world twice. So, what's the last year been like? Yeah, it's a pretty big difference, right? So, at least now we're getting like treated pretty good in the media, and Get Right had some really good points about what's going to be happening during uh, with esports and the pandemic. And we do suggest that you go to the BBC and you check out their content. It was a very nice interview. So yeah, thank you very much for watching the news for today. It's been a little bit nicer now being able to launch the news every few days. Thanks to our editors working Mondays and Fridays. Thank you so much, Alex. And it's super cool that you guys are also watching these videos, but we would love to see your comments. So if you guys have any thoughts about the news that we are sharing, please do comment below and then please share the videos. We're trying to create more content for you and we will be doing so in the future with downtime. Not only are we doing our cosplay content now, we're also doing our 
unboxing series and we're going to be launching a few more things in the future that we are looking forward to showing you. So thank you so much for following. That's been the news for today and you guys have a good one.